Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. So now we are going to do another question of our DT series that is max dot product of two subsequences. Basically till now we are doing all the questions of LCS only. So this is also one of the question of LCS. But for the next time I'll uh, make another sub um, topic series. So this is the last question for LCS which we are going to do. So let us go through this question. So given two arrays nums1 and nums2 return the maximum dot product between non empty subsequences of nums1 and nums2 with the same length so in this question we are required to return maximum dot product from nums1 and nums2 and we will be doing dot product of the same and then we are going to return the maximum of them till now we were doing longest common subsequence right so here again maximum thing is there and here somehow the thing is about the common so because of that common only it will be becoming the lcs question and how that is there i'll show you in the further example a subsequence of array is a new array form that, that we already know and here we know that 2 3 5 is these things we already know now let us directly jump towards the constraint So basically, the constraints are in such manner so that n square solution would easily work here, and even the numbers which are being given here. So, yeah, each number can go from minus thousand to thousand, so that even if we multiply at max of thousand into thousand, so it will be going to ten raised to power six. So that's why the range of the numbers is given in this image. So now let us go to this question. So here, if we see. For uh, doing the dot product, let me show you the example. So for doing dot product, either we can do two into three, or we can do two into zero, or we can do two into minus six. Right? Means uh, one time we are fixing the two and checking for all the uh, all which are being there in the nums two, and then we can also do other way round that we are checking for Two into three, then one into minus uh, one into three, then minus two into three, and then five into three. Means any way round could be there, right? Means either we could fix the first one, or we could fix the second one, or even this thing also be there that we are fixing both of them. Basically, two is also fixed and three is also fixed. Then in the next one, one is also fixed and zero is also fixed. So like this manner also we can go, right? So somehow here it comes out to be selecting one and non-selecting one. So it somehow that it becomes a question of inclusion and exclusion, right? So in all that context, now how L LCS comes into the picture? So here when we are either including this or including that, and there is one more thing which is being given to us that. We could also check that whatever was previously uh, stored, that also, and what is the next one which would be stored, that is also being there. Then also we can get a direct dot product, uh, which is the maximum. And the, in other example, if we see here, they are just taking for the one only, that is one from the nums one and one from the nums two, right? So that's why. Here directly we are checking for nums one of i and nums two of j. That's the thing which we are doing here. So these are also some of the examples, right? Now let us go ahead that how we are required to check for the that how we are going to even come up with the recursive solution or DP solution. This is a DP solution that's for sure because from the first example itself we can see that we are adding up from the previous one also. And even as per the question that we are required to figure out with the maximum dot product, so the, we are required to try out all the possible combination. And when it comes the part for the possible combination, so it simply depicts that it is a recursive solution. And as per the time, con, uh, as per the constraints given, so their recursive solution won't work. So surely we would be required to memoize it. And when the memoization comes into picture, so surely there would be a bottom DP also. So that's how this question becomes the question of DP. But surely this question is of inclusion and exclusion that we can clearly see. How it is a question of LCS or not? 
that we will come afterwards means when i would be coding then you could clearly see that how it is and even from the fact that we are including or excluding that also depicts that it is a question of lcs because we are figuring out that what is common among them means common for the nums 1 and nums 2 which is there that we are already figuring out here so although not directly as lcs but still the pattern which we are following here from we are selecting from nums 1 or not nums 2 or not that simply reflects that it is somehow following the path of lcs that's the thing here although in lcs what we were doing was we were just checking that if nums of 1 or nums of 2 are they equal then we were doing some operations as if they are not then we were doing some operations but in this question we are not doing if else conditions like that but we are directly moving ahead selecting from the nums 1 selecting from the nums 2 basically the sub portion of the lcs that is inclusion and exclusion question that is this question and that is how only some portion is similar to lcs not the complete portion that's the scenario here now let me show you that how we can come up with the recursive solution for the same so for the question what the things we are required with we are required with the recurrence relation and before that we are required with options right and after that we will check that what base case we would be selecting so for that thing let me show you that how we can do that you have already seen that what sort of examples could be there now let us come to the uh, coding approach of this particular let me show you so here you can check that nums1 and num2 is there right so options what we are having either we can select from nums1 or we can select from nums2 or we can select from both of them as i had shown you in the example right in example 1 and example 2 so like that only we are having options that we will be selecting and even we are required with the maximum dot product right so that's why i am doing with the maximum that whatsoever option was stored previously is that maximum or the new which we are calculating that is maximum that is nums of i minus 1 into nums of 2 j minus 1 plus recursion of i minus 1 j minus 1 so basically we would be multiplying the present nums 1 and nums 2 uh, numbers which would be there and then adding up the recursive call for the uh, previous one which would be coming up that is what else which uh, we can exactly figure out that is it basically giving us the maximum output or not so that's the thing which we would be doing here now next option is that we will be selecting that was the option to which was earlier stored is that maximum or the one which now we would be going ahead with the this particular recursive call that is not selecting the first one but selecting the second one from the nums2 so that's why we are doing this and third option is that either the option 3 itself is the maximum or the recursive call which will return us the answer after selecting the from the nums1 and not selecting from the nums2 so that this is the thing so here the things are that either both of them are variable so either first one is the variable that is first one we are moving ahead so here option 2 is there but here also one condition is that that if it is if the i is basically greater than 1 or not then only we will be going ahead and here also we are having because j minus 1 is there so it will also also only go in that manner when j is basically greater than 1 so that's why we are taking second variable part that is this one now these were the options right and these options are basically also somehow reflecting towards the recurrence relation itself because a recurrence relation would be somehow like this only and then at the end we would be returning maximum out of all these three options because at the end we required the maximum dot product right so maximum dot product would be returned out of these three only and then our base case is basically then i equal equal to 0 or j equal equal to 0 then we would be returning 0 because as multiplication with 0 is always 0 right so that's the reason in this base case we are doing like this so this is how our recursive uh, solution would be and then comes the part for memorization so memorizing this particular we can clearly see that there are two variable parts i and j right 
so that's why we would be going ahead with a 2d vector or 2d array means any 2d data structure we would be going ahead with and according to that only we would be memorizing this particular solution so after this now comes the part for the bottom up so for bottom up our uh, state would be tp of n into m that is the last one which would be there that would be reflecting as our answer and the transition would be somehow same the way we were doing in our recursive that is the first part which was there that we would be choosing the first from the nums one first from the nums two that we would be choosing and as this would be a loop so in that loop only we would be going ahead with all the selections of by basically making both of these as the variable and now comes the part for nums i minus 1 into nums 2 j minus 1 so for this particular we are basically choosing this one also and then adding up what was stored in the previous answer so that's the thing which we are doing here or we will be checking that when making the first one only as the variable and keeping the second nums 2 as the fixed part so then at that moment are we getting the uh, maximum answer or not or if we are keeping the nums 2 as the variable part and nums 1 as the fixed part then at that moment are we getting as an answer or not so this is how we are checking for that out of all these in which we are getting the maximum so this was the this was about the approach of doing this question now let's directly head over to the coding part of this question so here it is So first let me show you how recursive solution is like so basically in this recursive solution how we would be going ahead is that here we are not doing in the uh, main public function which is there we are just calling a recursive function where we are passing with the nums1 nums2 input vectors which were there with their size means uh, size of both of them and then here in this recursive solution what we are doing we are taking three options basically all three options which i have shown you in that recursive solution and in that the base case is this one that either i equal to 0 or j equal to 0 we would be returning 0 then in the case of option 1 we are simply checking the maximum of option 1 or nums of i minus 1 into nums of i uh, j minus 1 plus what were there to be given to us from the previous recursive call and then in the option 2 we are first checking that if j is greater than 1 if it is then we are checking for what is being there in the option 2 and what is being there being returned by this recursive call out of them whichever is the maximum we will be storing in option 2 and then for the option 3 we are checking i is greater than 1 then only we are checking ahead and at the end we are returning with the maximum of all of them so this is how we would be going ahead with the recursive solution now comes the part of memorizing the same so for memorization we are taking a 2d vector so for the 2d vector the first thing is that we would be resizing it so this is how we are resizing it and taking the size plus 1 and plus 1 is for our base case and we are initializing with int min that would be acting as our uh, flag that if it is not int min then sh- uh, surely there is some uh what we say as some answer stored so whole solution is as it is the way it is in recursion only part which is changed is this memo part that if it is not equal to int min that means that surely there is something stored so we will be returning that else we would be storing in memo of i j and same goes for this option and same goes for this option and at the end we would be returning the memo of i j just because of the fact because memo of i j itself would be storing the maximum out of all three options because earlier what we were doing was we were directly having the option 1 and the option 2 and the option 3 right and we were figuring out the maximum out of option 1 and what is being stored in the present one but now we are figuring out that all in this uh, single single line with the memo so that's why the maximum answer would be itself stored in this particular now comes the part for the bottom up solution so for bottom up solution here 
just figure out with this particular so that there is uh, no error for that memory and so on you can clearly see here the ranges which are being there so according to that only here the ranges is like 10 days to pi 6 at max it could go right so that's why we have taken the infinity as 10 days to pi 7 just for uh, just one step ahead of the 10 days to pi 6 and then what we are doing is we are just taking the size and then here we are earlier we were initializing with the minus infinity only right in that uh, memoization part so here also we are initializing with minus infinity just for acting it as plus rather than choosing 0 or minus 1 and then what we are doing next is now we are starting from the start earlier we were starting from the back side right but here we are starting from the start and here also even we are starting from the start still we are starting from i equals to 1 and j equals to 1 so that here we can figure out with these parts so here the thing is in our num theory itself whatever would be stored at i minus 1 and j minus 1 that would be uh, written here this multiplication of both of them and it will be also figuring out with these things that adding up into the minus infinity or giving uh, with the minus infinity here or minus infinity here whichever is the greater of all of these that would be basically returned and at the end the answer would be returned as this so this was what for this particular question and now comes the part for the time complexity and the space complexity so in recursion you can clearly see that how many options we are having so basically we are having here with three options right so that's why the time complexity here would clearly become 3 raised to power n plus 1 but again the thing is that we are choosing from either nums 1 or nums 2 that is either we are including or we are excluding so that's why choices are among the two things only so that's why rather than 3 raised to power n plus 1 it would be 2 raised to power n plus 1 so that's why the time complexity for the same would be two um, order of basically power of 2 raised to power uh, 2 comma n plus 1 n plus n and this case complexity would be order of n plus n so this was for the recursion it is not moving okay hmm. okay okay it's not moving because of this so this was for recursion now comes the part for the memoization so for memoization part the time complexity is basically order of n into m that is because of the matrix which we are taking and the uh, means the loops would put which would be there that would be in that manner and the space complexity would be order of n into m that is again because of the matrix which we are taking and the same goes for the dp uh, question also so this was all for this particular question i hope you like the explanation if you like it then do like and subscribe to my channel and also do share it if it added value to you and one last thing is this that this uh, channel is basically supported by newton school and the thing is that a lot of students ask me about if there is some structured course where live doubt uh, solving sessions are there one on one interaction is there one on one mentorship uh, sessions are there so i would recommend for the same uh, for newton school and the one of the best part about the courses of newton school is that there is no upfront fee you are required to pay the fee after you have done with the course and you are being placed and their placement starts from the 5 lp packages to 40 lp packets so that's why you could easily get placed to at marks of 40 lpa and after that after being placed then only you would be paying for the fees of the course else you won't be paying uh, fees for the course so this was all so yeah thank you